with Sumino Pellis when I read him. I have no idea what episode this is going to be. <laughs> but we'll make fun of that I've done I've done uh, 1651 podcasts with Coach Unplugged. Oh wow. We're on Well that will be on what's today? Today the 19th. What is today? Make sure your phone is silent so I got to make sure mine is too. Um today's the 19th. So I got, yeah, through through Wednesday, I've got 1,651 Coach Unplugged podcasts. There we go. <laughs> ah! Ooh, I like that. I'm going to take a picture of that. Look at that. I do feel like a fish in a uh, fishbowl. So the uh, the other two I'm doing today. Um, okay. Yeah, we're good. We're. Can, thanks. All right. Welcome to Coach Unplugged. Whoa! This uh, we're in the Blue Wire Studios. And welcome, Josh. A uh, couple things. First of all, I have. We were talking before we came on the air. I've done sixteen hundred and fifty-one Coach Unplugged podcasts. All of them have been in "quote unquote" the studio in Madison, Wisconsin. So usually, my intro is "Welcome to Coach Unplugged" and the fifth course, fifth quarter studios in Madison, Wisconsin. And now, and now we're sitting in the Blue Wire Studios with a bunch of. Uh, of glass and people walking by uh, on a Sunday morning, and a lot of them look like a lot of them look like they've lost a lot of money. What do you, th what yeah, do you they're, think, they're, Coach? They're not looking as good as they were when they flew in. That's <laughs> it, for sure. It's like it's like uh, it's like fish in a uh, fish bowl, you know. Uh, they're just kind of looking at us. And but anyway, uh, let's get let's get off to the podcast. Uh, Josh, I, uh, welcome. Thank you for coming in on a Sunday morning. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Uh, Introduce yourself. Tell me a little bit about your basketball journey. Ah, so. uh, go ahead. And then and the, for all the listeners, um, so they can kind of just know. And then we're going to talk about Nevada basketball and uh, kind of compare it to, to Wisconsin basketball. Yeah, so I'm a 27-year-old uh, high school coach out here in Las Vegas. Um, I've been coaching for the last 10 years. Um, all through uh, my senior year of high school, I got an opportunity to, to coach the, the JV team as an assistant coach. And so that kind of put me on my, my journey as a, as a coach, you know, kind of realized that playing wasn't going to be for me after high school, but um, coaching was. And so doing that, um, my high school coach told me, hey, when, you're, when you come back, I got a job for you. I don't care where I'm at, I have a job for you. And so I went away for a year and a half, came back, decided that I wanted to come back home, started coaching right away. Um, coached on the varsity team with him, helped assist with the JV team, and then it was a private school, so they had an elementary team. And so they gave me the entire elementary boys and girls program at the same time. So what age is that? Uh, that was uh, fifth and sixth graders. So I think they were 10 and 11, boys and girls at the same time. So what is the biggest obstacle with coaching that level? Patience. The patience level for somebody that – you know, when you're in the high school level, you expect a kid to know at least a little bit about basketball, a rule, you know, a, a fundamental of something. There, it's it's scratch. You're teach, you are their first experience with basketball. And so you have to make it fun for them, despite how competitive you are on the next day when you're coaching the varsity team and being able to try to differentiate the two. It, it was it was a struggle. You know, you know, I, t I tell people it's almost like herding cats a little oh, bit. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that is that is probably in and, and doing it with with two different, you know, groups at the same time. Those kids are they're chasing each other and you're trying to just get them in one single line to do a layup. Right. And, right. you know, you're talking about what foot to jump off of, you know, extending your hand and there you turn around and they're gone. 
Right, right. Yeah. No, and I've told people too, especially with coaching uh, youth, youth, youth players and stuff, is um, you got to keep them active. You got to keep them doing something at all times. But um, I found that out. I found it very difficult when I was coaching. I was coaching my high school team, and then I was also coaching my son's youth team. Oh. That shift is a really hard, like you said, yeah. a really hard mental shift. Um, so then what, what, what happened after that? Uh, so after that, I, um, I got started actually coaching another sport at a, a local public school, which is a large, much larger school. The school that I was at before, um, you know, 100 high schoolers. This one now, it's 2,800 kids. Um, and then I started coaching the girls' team there. Started out as a JV coach. And then the um, varsity coach decided he was going to leave. And so I put in for the girls' head varsity job and was able to get that job. And then uh, while that was actually simultaneously happening, I was also named the head football coach. So I was doing football and girls' basketball at the same time um, for about a year, right, going leading into COVID. So what was the hardest part about that? Because that, I, coached, I coached boys' volleyball for about, I think it was seven years. I coached boys volleyball in the fall, and then I think I had a week off in between, and then went right to to, to the high school boys basketball season. So, what was the hardest obstacle with that? Um, definitely trying to put in because it was I was the new coach essentially trying to put in my, you know, my touch on on the offense, my touch on our, our defensive principles and everything like that. And while me and the the previous coach we shared a lot of the same philosophies, you know, as you know. There's wordings, there's terminologies that are different. Um, and then, then there's also a little bit of, you know, I hung my hat on the defensive end. Right. Um, a little bit more, especially in a full court um, situation where he was much more of kind of a sit back in a 2-3 zone, kind of let people come to you. Um, I wanted to get after him. And so trying to get that mindset of for these girls that, you know, putting my touch on it while still not being there for the entire fall season right so I was really we were really hard in the summer um we were going we probably played in 30 games over the summer um with them trying to get them under that and then I kind of went um MIA MIA a little bit you know (laughs) that's what Um, I was gonna say so look before let's circle back into that because I want to I want to for listeners I want them to be able to hear this so um are there rules what are your specific rules in the summer for high school basketball or so, can you have because con- here's what we have in wisconsin we can have five contact days and then we can have unlimited contact days as long as it's not run through the school um so if a youth organization or something else runs it we can have from the last day of school until the first day of school or middle i don't even remember what it is because we start we stop august one because football starting and all of that so 30, 30 seems 30 is, a, 30 is a lot of games anyway but um, tell me tell me what that kind of looks like during the summer for high school so we we do everything kind of not through the school we okay. we do it all as a club program and everything like that so you know we go from being the sunrise mountain to being you know the the mountain or, okay. or whatever you know <laughs> however and where, and where is sun so tell me we're we're sitting on the strip in the, in in vegas right now how far is we're about 20 miles northeast from here right we butt and share a wall with nellis air force base okay okay so that's yep, where yep. we're at right at the base of the mountain okay. right up against the the um the Nellis Air Force Base is where our high school is located. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so we we are allowed to do things outside of school. Now, when it comes to being in school, everything with the school runs through the school year. And we have dead periods leading up to other seasons of sports. So, like, the two weeks before football, volleyball, all of those fall sports start, that's considered a dead period. You are not allowed to touch your kids at all because their mindset is, is you don't want to pull them away from being able to – try out and partake in another sport. Ah, that's interesting. Now, can you have, so our, our dead period is actually during the season. Can you like, not, so I, not during the season, during the off season. During so the- as long as school's going on, I can have contact with them from November to March. And then yeah. once March comes, I'm de- it's dead until school gets out. Like oh, I okay. can't, the, we, we can't have any, I can open the gyms and let them play. And that's the extent of my contact. No, yeah, no, we we don't have those like hard okay, press okay. rules like that. It's more like this is your this is your dead period. You can't do anything. You can't oh, you don't touch those kids at all. And then when that season gets ramped up, 
you're, you know, you can go right back to it. Oh, interesting. Okay, so you were doing both of those. Yep. And then what happened? And then I, uh, so COVID hits. So we, we were able to, luckily, we finished our high school season for basketball about two weeks before COVID hit. Um, okay. and everything was shut down. And so during that time period, I get a phone call from my principal that says, you know, hey, you got to make a decision. Um, we would love to have you as the girls coach. You know, you just finished. We had actually one of the most successful years in, in school history. Um, and he's like, or you can continue with football. And so me thinking, you know, football obviously being a, a better job, a bigger job, I was like, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take football and, you know, I, could, I can go back to basketball. Right. Is, um, is football big in Nevada? Um, it, it it's is not Texas football. It's not Texas football <laughs> by any means, but I mean it, it it's big. And you know, with my age at that point in time, there was there's nobody close to me. Um, you know, I was 24 years old. Right. And I'm the head coach, and um, that was kind of even in my own you know prideful research, I, I couldn't find <laughs> anybody that was anywhere close to my age as a head football program of a varsity. You know, I mean, we're, we're playing in the, the at that point it's the second highest classification in the state. Okay. Um, and nobody is is anywhere close. So I was in my own prideful ways was like, I can go back to basketball. You know, there's there's a little bit more. I mean, I was still the youngest basketball coach, but there's people that were within a few years of me. There's nobody close to me. Right. That's the hard part about being 20 sometimes. Is yeah. That pride gets in the way. Yeah. <laughs> pride become, comes before the fall. I mean. uh, it does. It does. Okay. So um, so we went with football. Then what? So now we're we're then I'm we're back. That's COVID year, right? That's COVID year. Okay. Um, and so then we come back. We actually missed out on every sport except for spring here in Nevada. Um, Are you that, kidding me? We did not play. We did not play any fall sports or any winter sports. We missed an entire. We missed two full sports seasons before yeah. we came back. Yep. So here's what happened, in Wisconsin. We um, we COVID happened. I remember the date. Our last day of school was March 13th, 2020. Um, spring was canceled, and then the entire athletic season of 20, uh, so that would have been 2021, mm. but it was canceled. My, my seniors didn't have anything. Yeah, so that, that was. The whole year. That was similar to you then. So, yeah. so ironically, we. Um, Were the casinos open? Um, <laughs> no, no. For I mean, we went here in Nevada for a good two months. We went dark. I mean, dark, dark. Nothing was open. Really? Uh, nothing. I okay. mean, you could go to a fast food place and you could go to Walmart. I mean, right. that was the extent. I mean, okay. you couldn't go to even your, even a, like if you didn't sell food at your store, you couldn't, you, you could not go there. there. Okay. Um, so ironically though, that, so that 2020, 2021 school year um, where we missed out, uh, we finally started to come back to like the return to play stuff. And we had that spring season so they allowed baseball softball track to, to play um coaches around the valley put together a basketball tournament and it was essentially a de facto season to right tournament to be able to say like we crown a champion your seniors get to play everything like that so ironically at that point in time i was not the head basketball coach um but i coached that entire league so i still ended up coaching my seniors um right. Anyways, in that whole league, because the uh, the guy that was one of my assistants that had taken over the job, um, the timing of it didn't work for him because you know, most coaches are teachers. He wasn't a teacher, right. and so they were running it during the school week, um, at you know work. at yeah. at random times and stuff like that. So, so we did that, and then um, we come back to school. I right? go back to coaching football, and after the last season, they decided that they were going to part ways, and so we. Uh, we're just sitting here now. <laughs> so, so what? What? Let, let's talk a couple things. So, the, do you? So, you want to come back into coaching? Obviously. Oh, absolutely. What? What? What is going to be the avenue of that? You think is it going to be? And, and are you a teacher? I didn't even ask. You I that. am a teacher. So, so what do you teach? I teach video production, actually. Really? Yeah. Oh, you should walk in the back of the Blue Wire Studio. Yeah. Look at that thing. Yeah, this thing is awesome. <laughs> I was already checking. I was. It was funny because as they were sitting there checking our cameras, I was looking at. I was like, oh, what cameras do they use? Um, so yeah, no, so we, so I teach video production, um, which is, I mean, it's awesome. It's a, it's a great, 
you know. That's a good gig. Yeah, it's a so great for, gig. For, for people that are teachers, you're always looking for that kind of gig. Yeah. Because the kids want to do it. Exactly. And that's, I mean, I did. Can I TikTok? Yeah. yeah can, I, can I set up my video, you know? And, yes. and, and, and it's <laughs> encouraging. And I, and I get to encourage those things. It's like, okay, what is the TikTok trend this week? Okay, let's do it, oh. you know? Um, we could go down that rabbit hole and talk about TikTok. Oh. And uh, first of all, I'm a stats teacher. So we have a video production person and a stats teacher. The statistics behind TikTok is crazy. Um, the algorithm is unbelievable. That I mean, it's addicting. It's, oh. I mean, I'm addicted. I yeah. watch TikTok before I go to bed. It's crazy. Because yeah. um, they feed you what you want. They, exactly. They, they, it's, it's tailor-made to you, yes. no matter what. And that's where the video production comes in. Um, anyway, we get off. I, I tend to get off. If you've listened to Coach Unplug, I get off task anyway. But it's true. It's not like Netflix where you get to pick what you watch. They yeah. tell you what you're going to watch. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Um, all right. So awesome gig. That's a great gig for coaching. Yes. Oh, it's fantastic. Because you can use Huddle. You can use all the video software to break your stuff down. Yep. And, and that could be a class project. It is a class <laughs> project. We <laughs> actually, we actually for um, our boys team, we've actually put to, started putting together their individual highlight tapes. And so we they brought in all their clips, and we're put, that's part of my class's job is they have to put together the players' highlight tapes for the year. That's great. Yeah. Okay, so that's a good gig for the future of your coaching career. Keep that gig if you can. <laughs> that's uh, that's why I'm still at the school. That's why you're still. That's at the why school. I didn't leave after yeah, today. Yeah, don't it was, leave. It was like uh, teaching. I could go be a coach, but nobody really has a job for me. Well, the and, and the yes, yeah, so you need to find one that has the video production because. The, the sole reason I'll get out of teaching is grading. It's like laundry. It yeah. never goes away. Never. It's always there. And, and you don't take stuff home, probably. You're not grading stuff at, at, at never. 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, never. I get, I'm going to be on a plane going back to Wisconsin, probably grading papers today. Um, so good gig. All right, so that will be perfect. for So you don't want to leave the school. Do people coach that aren't in a specific school? Does that uh, work in Nevada that way? It does. It's obviously not ideal for uh, for anybody. Um, the thing we have out here is we're not all on a consistent schedule either. What does that mean? So we we have we have like our school. We get out at one ten, but the next school you get out at one ten. One ten. What time do you start school? Seven a.m. Okay, that's a, that's a high school starts at seven a.m. High school starts. At 7 okay, so that should never happen. Oh yeah, that's the big. That's the. That big should area. never happen. Are you kidding me? The kids are up until like one or two a.m. That's oh, a yeah. horrible. It's 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 actually just started this year. Oh, that's horrible. Um, I mean, not like we were any better before. We started at seven forty-five. Right. Um, but they uh, the big we had big busing issues, and we actually had it actually started to affect athletics a lot because there was you know a huge busing shortage, and we would have we'd be sitting there, we'd have a game at three thirty. And we'd still be sitting there at three o'clock waiting for a bus to pick us up, and so we they had to make adjustments to these schedules to try to get everything to to work to be able to get people where they That's, needed to yeah, go. Yeah, busing is a huge issue in Wisconsin too. Okay, so what is going to be your next step to find a uh, a coaching job? So, well, first of all, I'm available. <laughs> Well, we'll make sure I'll make sure I put coach's stuff in the yeah, uh, in well, the show well, notes. I'll make sure, sure I have my resume right, there. I'm available. Resume. Available. Um, no, so well, I, are you willing to move to Wyoming? Uh, I might have to run it by the wife. But, okay. You know, my, my wife is big on on Target, so you gotta have to find a Target in in Wyoming that's there. Oh, she likes Target, oh, like the sh the store. The store Target? Target. Okay. It's that's where all my coaching checks go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Target. It's the Target. All right. Oh, that was that was one of the things when we talked about. Oh, and I talked about moving for coaching is that you know, we're not going to go to some small little town. It has to be somewhere that has a target. Yeah. Which, which is most of the U S which exactly. Yeah. I was like, I don't think that's a very hard sell. No. And so, no, we, we, we can yeah. make it work. Yeah. Even um, Northern Wisconsin has targets. It's like you can be in the middle of nowhere. I guess. Yeah. Big red circle is going right. to be there for you. Don't worry. Tarche. Yes. Um, so no, so, um, I, uh, my boys coach at the school is one of my really good friends and his big thing is trying to get me on board with him um so that, that that's does, a good cake it's easier to get a job when you have a coaching job yeah and so he um he wants me to to join with him um 
there's some other jobs around town that are that are open you know um i i kind of settled down on the year i I know we talked about it before you know my my mother-in-law passed away and so i was kind of just didn't even really think about it but right as that kind of heals and time kind of goes on um I'll definitely be looking into some of the more openings around town. Um, like I said, you know, luckily I'm still pretty young. Yeah. I'm 27. So how is the, how is the teaching jobs availability, all those things? So, I mean, in, 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 like I in know there's my, a teaching shortage in but. my area. It's, it's kind of like what you said. It's the job that people go and they don't ever leave you. Right. You, you either retire or you die in my job because it's such a good gig. Right. Um, so finding those around town is a little bit tougher. Um, now, luckily, the good thing about the way that Nevada teaching stuff works is you can go into, excuse me, you can go into a job and then you can get your licensure while you're in there and kind of go through that route. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, I mean, it does have some availability for me. It's not like I'm, I'm tied down to it, but I mean, teaching is, you know, 90% of what you're doing. So. Right. It, it does make it a is. difference. Yes, yes. I couldn't. I couldn't buy like I'm looking outside in the, into the casino right now. I couldn't buy a, a third of an inch of the carpet out there with my coaching salary. It's basically, uh, it's it's a donation. I always you say get a coach, coaching salary. Yeah, we get stipends. You get stipends. We get. A, I get. A, it's not bad. Wisconsin's not a bad place. Um. All right. So let's talk some basket. Let's talk bas- some some specific basketball stuff. Um. So what would you, what would a tip be? What would a tip be for a younger coach? What would you give to someone that's listening to this that's going into coaching? You you know, I didn't get I still remember I didn't get my the job I really wanted. I didn't get and I'm so glad I didn't get it. Um similar to sometimes you lose a job and yeah. maybe it's meant to be. Yeah, um no. cuz I I'm telling you if I'd have gotten that job I wouldn't have won three state titles. I wouldn't be in the hall. I just wouldn't be because I wouldn't have had the players. Um, so it happened for a reason. My wife said she wouldn't live in northern Wisconsin either, so I can <laughs> empathize. She goes, I'm not new. That's not happening. Um, but what tip would you give a younger coach? I would say it, don't be deterred by any sort of failure, um, kind of like what what you're saying right now. You know, um, I, I originally, you know, I didn't get the jobs that I that I thought I was going to get. <laughs> and at um, twenty, you think you should be the head coach at Duke. And I'm telling you that at least if you were like me, I thought like I'm. You, you know, know the like is the first school that that I was at was my alma mater, um, and I I thought that I was going to be a shoe in to to become their next head coach. You know, I was like, well, as soon as as soon as he leaves, he's going to call me. Right. No matter what, like it doesn't even matter that that I'm not there or whatever. Like he's going to call me, and I'm going to be like I'm going to be right there. Um, and I didn't, and I was, and for a while I was like, well, I'm not going to coach there ever again. Like, I'm not, I'm not right. going to help out. Um, and then, I, you know, I, as like cooler heads prevailed, I was like, all right, like this guy is way, way more qualified than, right. than you know, right. as much as I think I'm qualified. But I mean, like, that's, that's being a 20 year old though, Yeah, to be honest with you, it really is. So, yeah. So, I mean, even then, um, you, like I said, when I was going through the, getting the, the girl's head job and, and everything like that. I was trying to be the football coach and I know I didn't get that. And then I got the girls job and, and I loved it. And it was, I was so ecstatic. And then I it ended up working out that, you know, I didn't, I didn't sit there and I say, Oh, well, if I'm not going to get the head football coach, then I'm not going to be here at all. Right. Because a month later, a month later after the guy that they hired, he walked out on them and they came to me and was like, we want you to do this. So then at that point I have two head coaching jobs. Right. And, you know, like I said, I was very, very. Would you think about the girls' job again? Uh, yeah, for sure. For sure. It was actually one of the comments that I made to uh, then when they decided that they were going to move on from me from football. I was like, well, you guys made me choose. Right. You know, if, if it was, that would be fine. If you took football away from me and I still had this other job, like my, the, I would be, you know, a little bit more upset, but I wouldn't be nearly as upset as I am now because now I have nothing. Right. You know, now I'm not coaching anything. Right. I, so I told them, I said, well, are you going to give me the, the, the girls' job back? And they're like, well, we would have to take it away from, from the coach. And I was like, and. Yeah, just, okay, I know. <laughs> I know. I think that growth mindset's big, though, too. And I tell my players this all the time. It's like, and we've hit some obstacles. We were talking about that before we came on the air. Um, I think those obstacles can do one of two things. They can make you stronger, and you can learn from them. 
which is that growth mindset, or you can just start blaming. Exactly. Like, you know, um, like like the official the other night that told me that we needed to build bridges and he, rather than yell at him. I hope he listens to this. Sorry. You need to anyway, build bridges. That's what he said to me. So I was scolding him a couple times uh, which, about which we some never of, do about some of his calls. And he goes, I'm going to go home. I'm going to go home angry tonight because I should have teed you. And I go, well, I don't want you to be angry. And maybe so, you should have teed me. So go me. ahead and give me the it, tea. It, like, we were up like 35 at that point. Too. Oh, yeah. And it's like, if you got to do what you got to do. But, you know, it's like, why aren't you building bridges? It's like, because you guys miss some obvious calls. If I do that, the parents are yelling at me. Yeah. So, yeah. I know. I, I yeah. Anyway, that's a whole The, the coaching ref dynamic is always good. <laughs> I, uh, you know what a friend told me a long time ago is just assume every official is bad. They're all bad. Yeah. And when you get a decent call, you'll feel better. Like, so I just have the mentality that all of them are going to make bad calls. Even then, though, they, they don't always, you know, I, I have my, my one really good ref encounter was when I was coaching JV girls basketball. And we're in the middle of it. It's early. And I hadn't been on these guys at all or anything like that. But a couple trips down, my girl had tacked and, you know, gotten fouled, and they didn't call it. So they come down, and the girl gets fouled, and I'm like, that's a foul. Whistle blows. Perfect. I'm happy. I have no issues. Yeah. Other ref comes over. Guy's making his call. Other guy comes over. He's like, Coach, you know, we got it. We don't need your help. And I was like, yeah, I know. I know. I know. But sometimes I think you do. Tease me up. <laughs> well, what? <laughs> I, I was joking with you, man. Like <laughs> I know. Sometimes I think you need a little help. Um, do you have a do you have a favorite practice drill or something you do at practice? Oh, I do. So we run this. Uh, I call it the five man breakout drill, and it is for you know to ten to fifteen minutes. It's continuous, nonstop. But the way that we have organized it is is it runs directly in line with our press break, and so Ooh, I like that. And so we'll have two guards. Uh, each at the elbows. We'll have a rim runner that's taking the ball out of bounds, and we have two that are running a continuous loop on the outside. And so guy makes the layup, grabs the ball out. Ball can never hit the ground. So makes the layup, comes out, takes it out. Whichever direction they take the ball out of bounds because you have to clear the, the hoop, so you got to get outside the key. That guard splits, comes right to the ball, outlet pass. The opposite guard is flashing straight to the middle. We're getting the ball to the middle. Now we have two running up the sideline. We're dishing it to one of them. If we can, we're trying to get right to the basket on that first one. If not, we make the extra pass. Layup goes in. While we have that rim runner, they got to run straight down the middle of the court, and they're catching the ball before it comes out of the cup. We're running oh, it right I know. Back. I hate when the ball hits the floor. So what do you think about footwork? Just a side note on this because that just jumped in my head. Footwork is horrible nowadays. It's that it's completely horrible nowadays it's, I, it's almost non-existent i know and the kids that do it look like lebron oh and they they those they, they look like they're an all-star because i know it's very simple especially down in the post i know post work I, footwork it is i mean a drop step is like you would think that you have had you have found the golden move okay so i'm gonna age myself when you do the sigma move the jack sigma move the up and under for people that don't know what I'm talking who? about, but who, yeah, Jack Sigma. He played for the C Seattle Sionics. Uh, Seattle. He played for Seattle Sonics, right? I believe he did. He had that weird, the weird jersey. That's the yeah. OKC Thunder, right? Yeah. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. That, uh, I'm just, that's yeah. the name he came. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just dating <laughs> myself so, to you. That's yes, <laughs> it is. It's true. Uh, anyway, so it's the up and under, and they do that in a game or something. You know, they all want to do the Euro and the. It's oh, like, the, the high Euro, too. The high euro, over. and I and and they and they complain. Here's what I love about some of the players too. They complain. I said, yes, you can do the euro, but I'm just telling you, half the officials are going to call it a travel because they don't know. Yeah, and they're they're 30 years behind where they need to be. So it's like if they're going to call it a travel, it's a travel. Don't do it. Like anyway, it's the, the hardest thing. We get what, a, we get the ref out here that um, beat when the euro step was first first coming around, and the kid traveled. I mean, it was. It was three steps and and one. I mean, it was it was awful, and we're like, that's a travel. Ref runs by. That's a euro step, coach. You need to learn about it. I know what a euro step is. Thank you. I do know. And I know what it looks like. And I know that it's still only two steps, but I digress. Yes. 
<clears throat> what do you think the hardest part about coaching is? Coaching basketball, coaching football, it doesn't matter. That's because it says coach unplugged. On the yeah, coach. no, I so. mean, um, the hardest part, I think, in some ways is getting past the game and, and getting into, you know, the, the why behind some things. Um, that was really, really hard for me um, coming up was that um, trying to just understand, like, to me, basketball or, or sports or anything, like, that was everything to me. Right. At that point in time, nothing else mattered. I know. I always say that girls were poisonous at that point because I was so laser focused. It's yeah. Like, oh. if, you, if you, unless you were going to rebound for me, I had no time. For yeah. Me. No, I like, mean, like <laughs> it was in that, I mean, if I was going, if I was in, if I wasn't in practice, I was at home sleeping. And if, if, or I was in school, like I was going, that was everything to me. And so, um, understanding like this generation. And for me, it was even harder because starting out coaching, I mean, I started out at, I mean, 19 years old, I was coaching, um, as a, as a head coach of, of, you know, different levels and things like that. So I'm not that far removed from some of these kids. Um, and just looking at them at the different mindset of like, yeah, I, I like basketball. I, well, first of all, I'm gonna I'll be devil's advocate a little bit. I think COVID messed them up a little bit. Yeah, but but this was even before before COVID. COVID. I mean, even, COVID because I just see in Wisconsin right now. I just see them coming out of COVID. I just see them coming out of that fog, athletically, academically, socially, everything. I and just, that that's definitely been a hamper. I mean, I've noticed that a lot. We we talked about that a lot. Um, going through that season that was I mean right out of COVID of like we we had to have coaches meetings of like and like sit down and be like listen it's a different world right now right you know like what what these kids went through you know they've been locked up like they and I mean a lot of kids were really I mean truly locked up like oh it's crazy there's no place for them to go there's nothing for them to do um you know with my school we're we're not an inner city school but we're a lower income school so we're we're way we're way far of, out. You have a lot of base kids. No. no, they go to school on the base, or they go to. We actually they're the they're our our dividing line. So the base is our dividing line for our um, <coughs> our zone. Okay. So a lot of them go to another school, but even then, a lot of them will go on on campus because they've put a new like charter school that's on cha- on campus that they've kind of feed all the kids into and everything like that. So we don't have, if any really um and so we we um we had to have those meetings of like this is a different world that these kids are in now um and trying to get them back out of it and getting back to understanding like there's rules there's how you do things there's you know there's accountability and that was a big thing was the accountability of like no like you have to do this nobody's going to do this for you you have to do it Right. Um, especially for some of those those younger, younger, you know, freshman, sophomore kids that, you know, they were they were eighth graders and now they're a sophomore in high school. It, it's, it's just weird how that. Yeah, there, there's a huge dynamic with there in, in the in the in the issue I see with these kids. A couple things. First of all, they don't hydrate enough. That's <laughs> that's the big thing. But they also don't get enough sleep. They no. really do not get enough sleep. That has been one of my things because because this this thing, the phone that I'm holding up right now, they're on it. They don't sleep. They're on it till, and, and the funny part is we have like a group chat with my team and I'm old. So sometimes I'll wake up at 2 AM and do some work, but I'll go on Snapchat and I see that little head pop up. Well, why is your little head popping up? Because you're on Snapchat at 2 AM. Yeah. You're, you're 17 years old. Why you should be asleep. Yep. You know, you wonder why you're getting sick or, or they're on the, or they're on the game. Yeah. They're playing you know. a game. And, and like, and you know, I always, and that's kind of my, my niche to, to when I, when I'm talking to kids is like, look, I'm not much older than you. <laughs> like, and I always, you know, I am, I'm I always, much older I always tell one of my favorite lines to tell kids is like, listen, I'm not even old enough to be your dad. Right. You know, I'm, I'm not. And you know, you, some of you have brothers and sisters that are older than me. Like me and you can relate. Let me, let me explain this to you. You can't be on the game until three o'clock in the morning on a school night. Like, that just doesn't work. I don't care. Let's take everything else out of it. You're not going to be a successful person doing that. You know, we can – now Now let's throw athletics in there. You haven't slept 
Now you've come to school. What did you eat for breakfast this morning? Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, I didn't. Okay, what did you have for lunch? Hot Cheetos. <laughs> okay, what? Anything else? Um, no, not today. I don't. You know, I just had a bag of Hot Cheetos. Great. Well, now I know why you're you're, you're doing sluggish. This. Yeah. And it's like they go and have all that pot. I know it's it's horrible. Um. All right. So I want to get a couple. We got about ten minutes here. I want to get a couple more questions in. Um, what do you think the hardest thing to teach is, from a coaching standpoint? Let's just let's just narrow in on basketball. What do you think the hardest thing to teach is? The small things of the game that I take for granted. I mean, little, little, tiny. You know, even at a at a high school level, a triple threat, a, a rip through things that. By the time that I get here, I shouldn't be telling you these things. And so I take them for granted completely because it should already be ingrained in you. Right. You should know that you're going to catch, and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to rip through. Right. It's the rip through. And then they wonder. So here's what we refer to it as. So they put the ball. I said you put the ball in one of three spots. Statue of Liberty, which is above your head. Pregnant, which is here. Or giving birth, which is below your, below your between your knees. So I said, if you put the ball at any of those three positions, it's going to get taken. Yeah. So why aren't you ripping it through? I know it's like yeah. the the one above the this the, one is yes, the horrible. Yes, I, I one. just can't understand. And then because then, I'm getting doubled, coach, I gotta look. I'm going like this. I and then they get, and then they turn uh, their back. I'm getting doubled. And then they turn their back, and you're like, what? What are you doing? I know. It's like, oh my gosh, I don't understand it. And it's, it's like I'm looking like this, and I'm looking around. It's like. Well, you're not you're not strong enough with it at that point, you know. And and I I got I had one kid that we we ran a um, we ran a flex offense, you know, basic flex. I'm switching you if you run that, but go ahead because we just played a team and they couldn't and reverse the ball. It was, we used to run that a long time ago. It was you the have flex to be, is a cross screen down screen, kind of like the swing that Wisconsin used to run. Yep. Um, yeah, it's one of it, you look it up. It's a good it's a great continuity offense for a younger it, age level. It absolutely is. And it's and I really like to do it in a one or two spurts. Right. right. This time down we're gonna run it. Boom, we get a we get a nice easy. and it slows them. It yep. does slow them. And yes. it slows and it gets that that one extra help side to think for two seconds that the back door screen is coming. And so they're like, Well, but I always teach it that the, that pass from the from the wing. It's got to be. It's got to be hard. It's got to be an overhead, and it's got, you got to whip it in there. So the kid tells me, "Well, you teach us to put the ball above our head." No, no, I don't. <laughs> I teach you that one singular pass. Right. One singular pass is going to be an overhead pass. Right, and it's also it's also it's also the pivot of you know at least when I I'm old, but when I grew up, it's like you never make a one handed. pass. It's like well, yeah, you do. You make a one handed pass. It's like it's like layups. It's like I. I remember going to basketball camp and it'd be the one, two, and up. And it's like, okay, that's great. But how often do you shoot that layup? Like oh. we do our layup lines. We'll, we, we have them go opposite side. We have them with a punt, with a football bag. Yep. We, we want – Jump we, it off of two feet. Two feet and yep. one feet. Well, you should always go off. Here's, here's the issue. It's like I got, a, I, got a, I got a really good team and we got some nuances to it. We have a couple little guards. And I, there's times it's like – I said, when we're going against a 6'10 kid – you can't go off two feet. You got to get it. You got to float it. Like yeah. you're not getting that shot off in any, any bizarro world. That shot's not going off. So I said, most of the time you should two foot because you're being strong. You're under control. You're going to be able to score. But I said, you got to read the read the room. Like you can't get that shot off. <laughs> um, it just doesn't work. Um, so you've only been coaching how many? Five years? Four or five years? How many total years? Total years is ten. Ten. Yeah, if I I go all the so, way back to that first year. So let's go back to that first year. What's your biggest coaching failure? And what could you what could the audience learn from that? Uh, my biggest coaching failure is going to be uh, in picking football, picking football well, or basketball. Yes, <laughs> picking football or basketball, especially in that mindset, because it was a hard decision for me. I mean, I I say you know I say oh I could pick football, but it it I agonized over it for for weeks. Um, and I, and I kind of just boiled down to, like I said, was what job would I have a better chance of landing again? Um, and that's why, but that girls basketball season, we were, we were pretty good. Um, 
we were a little bit still rough around the edges, but we were we were pretty good. And we had taken a team, and um, we went up to their place and we had beaten them by like thirty five. And we came back in my in my own regard, you know, I was taking it a little lighter than I than I should have. Right. Um, trying to I was trying to be mindful of where we were at, and I was trying to be I was trying to I out coached myself, in a way. Um, because that, I, that, that's a great bit of advice for coaches. Don't overcoat. Yeah. Like and I, I did that early in my career to not overcoat. And it's that's like, what I tried to do. I, tr- I knew that we had another game that was coming up. Um, and we were playing on Friday, Monday. And, um, and so I was like, no, like we need to work on some of these little things that will help us for Monday's game. Cause Monday's game is a big game. It was going to def- decide our, if we were going to be able to get a one or a two seed. And, we ended up dropping that game and we could never by the time that I had that I had realized and my, my assistant coaches had realized that like we're going to lose this if we keep going down the path that we go down we could never get over the hump of you know okay let's get back to our fast paced transition you know pressing we we had already dug our our hole too, hold is too it was too, too big far, too and far. so we 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 battled back but we had Ended so much energy trying to get back into it that we couldn't finish. And so we ended up dropping that game, and it was a game that we should never have lost. I mean, we play that game 10 more times, and we should win 10 more times. And those are the ones that just, they just, oh, right. they We're sitting here talking about it today. I know. And I, it's it, so far. It, it agonized over <laughs> it. It is. It is. Um, all right. So I'm going to go through. I usually, there's two things I, I end with. I always end with that question, and then I end with um, what I refer to as my rapid fire. So I'm going to ask you specific questions and then just give me as quick a response as you can. Okay. What is your favorite brand of basketball? The actual ball that you use to play the game. What's your favorite brand? Oh, Nike. Okay. And why? Uh, I like the the divots on it. They're a little bit thinner. And so that when I, when we play, you know, I think that it just makes it, you don't get that, you get a better touch on it. Okay. And do you, does the, does Nevada have a specific high school ball? Yeah, we use a, a well. You can use any ball during the season, but the playoffs, it's Wilson. So most it's people, Wilson. Yeah, so we're most, Spalding. We're TF. We're a TF thousand. Oh really? Yeah, I don't. I don't like it. No. It's a weird. It doesn't last. Yeah. That's the thing. I I like the synthetics because they almost last longer. Um, one word to describe your ideal player. Teachable. I mean, I I, I really. Okay. I mean. Okay. I feel like that's a that's a no, cop that's out, a but I no, mean that's a that's such a, that's a such one. a big thing. I mean, if I can just get somebody, to, I think that's a great one to listen <laughs> and to just you know almost that that kid that'll just run through the wall because you told him to run. Through Stop the wall. talking and yes. listen. Yes, and I just know. listen. I know. You know, I, I promise you, I'm trying to make you better. <laughs> it's like I know I have to do that. It's like yeah, I'm going to tell you a quick story before we go on the next one. So uh, I was telling you we had a game um, on on Tuesday this week and Friday, and I go into the locker room. It was a team we had lost to. We had only lost a couple conference games. We had lost to them early in the season. I walk in the locker room for the pregame speech, and um, it was on Tuesday. And one of the non-players, one of my bottom players, says, hey, Coach, I got a question. I got a question. I go, what? You have a question? And everyone in the room said to this player, stop talking. You don't have a question because they knew what the question was going to be because he probably asked it. And I go, what? Well, what's the question? They go, no, coach, it's, no, there's not time for this. No, 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 no. So that is like, I'm just saying from, that's my ideal team Yep. because they took care of the problem before it was a problem. Absolutely. Because it was going to be some middle schoolish it was jokeish. Be, hey, am I going to get to play tennis? Right. <laughs> it wasn't even going to get to be that. I think it was probably some sort of, but they took care of it before I had to, which was great. All right. Next question is, um, I want that's great. I, that's a great story. I wanted to share that one, one, one sporting event. You could go to any sporting event in the world and I'd buy the ticket. What would you go to and why? Ooh, I got, to, I mean, either it's gotta be the Super Bowl for the splendor. Of, yes. Of, I, not for the game. Yes. Not for the game for the, for the experience and the splendor. I mean, you talk about the, parade of of what something is i mean it's yeah, all i'm going the for the concert yeah, yeah yeah go ahead yeah um exactly yeah, the halftime show <laughs> yeah, whatever halftime show. it is i mean um or some sort of olympic championship game 
for because of you know that patriotic best of the world best of the I world know. i mean head to head i mean I, so I, in my basement i have a i have a i have a man cave in the basement i have mark johnson's uh uh signed jersey from okay. he was on the miracle on ice in, yes. in 84 it was 84 maybe 82. it was 80 it was 80 no was it 80 i think it might have been 80 was it oh, it, might, yeah. it was 80 i think i was in middle school anyway um i taught his daughter it was great um but you're right there's something i remember i was in a car station wagon like family <laughs> vacation coming back from a tournament in eighth grade when the miracle on ice happened and i, I mean even to this day like like watching you know the remakes or the, the I, know. I mean it the the goosebumps the chills you know and then you see them standing up on the podium with the national i mean there's there's to me that's, that's where the national anthem should be played too i have a whole problem with the national anthem being overplayed you should like why do we do it before a high school game we got enough things to worry about yeah we don't need we don't need to play the national anthem there play it play, anyway that's a whole side note all right what's your favorite pre-game or post-game meal Ooh, um post-game meal has got to be Pizza and wings. Ooh, mine's Chick Fil A. Okay. It closes at ten. Our game started at seven fifteen, and there's been more than one time I've told the officials Chick Fil A closes at ten. Let's take care of this. Let's get this. Get, going. get this tight. Okay. And what about pregame meal? Pregame meal. I'm not a big pregame meal person. I'm not I'm, either. I'm gummy worms is really <laughs> like that's really what I I usually have some some candy in my in my bag that I just kind of dip into a little bit. I'm not like. A, a pregame, let me go. Usually, I've already had lunch at that point in time. I know that after the game, we're gonna go. We're gonna go somewhere and we're gonna eat. Um, so I, uh, it's just I, something. That my I, nerves are. My nerves get better. Me. All right. What's your pre? What does your game day look like? Oh, so um, obviously, ninety nine point nine percent of the time, it's a teaching day. Um, whether or not. It's my, a, I'm going to put in air quotes yeah. for me. It's a teaching day. Are my, game day. Are my, is my administrator <laughs> listening to this? Uh, if it is, I'm, I teach I'm the entire day. I'm close enough to retirement. I don't care. I'm, Listen, I'm yeah. early. I'm still early. I'm not even out of my, I'm not vested yet. <laughs> okay. So, uh, no, so it's, you know, it's a teaching day, but usually it's, it's, I have some sort of worksheet or some sort of independent work for my kids and I'm watching film. Right. Um, I'm making sure that I go over my, my game plan. Um, usually texting with coaches. Um, if it's a football game, I'm, that's really the day that I sit down and I'm, you know, deciding my script of my my first, you know, couple plays that we're gonna call. Um, if it's basketball, then, you know, I'm going back over the film. I'm looking at, okay, what what sets do I really like? Um, what what defenses do I really want to, you know? So you're going through your game. Prep. I'm going through it, and then um, after after that school day's over, you know, it's usually getting everything set up. You know, the, all the administrative stuff that us coaches have to do. <laughs> You know, I gotta get the concession stand ready. I gotta get the. We gotta, the, we gotta, we gotta get the floor clean. I'm getting a, you know, I'm oh, sweeping yeah. the floor. The, don't get me started on the floors. That's my, that is my crutch that I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna keep going back to. We, uh, I, the, the floor. That's another thing with kids these days. When I was growing up, once the floor was clean, you never touched it with your shoes. You either had your your game shoes on or you were wearing socks. And the kids, even your kids on your team. Will be running around in their street shoes, and I'm like, "What are you?" And then I know they don't. And then about in the second quarter, they're like, "Oh, coach, it's slippery." Well, yeah, because you were wearing yeah, your vans. Yeah, and it's used for and it's used for Phi Ed too. No one changes for Phi Ed anymore. Um, what's one thing you do to relax? Um, I'm a I'm a TV watcher. Okay, I really am. Um, I will sit down in my my recliner chair and I will binge watch some oh, TV. God, you sound old. Man. Yeah. Uh, do you have any superstitions? Um, I don't. I don't really have any. If we're on a good win streak, I'll try to keep something the same. But I don't have anything that it's like I I I got to keep doing this. Okay. Do you? I do. What is it? Uh, I have an outfit. It's not quite this outfit. I've I I have many superstitions. Like I miss practice on Wednesday because Wednesday was tax day, and every year for the last twenty five years, that's the day I do my taxes. Okay. So I missed half a practice. Got to go to my do my taxes. And we've won three state titles, and I've won 80% of my games in Wisconsin. So I'm not messing with you're it. Not messing. The kids look at me like, what are you talking about? I go, it's just the day I go to do my taxes. Don't ask. Yeah, like, don't worry about don't it. Don't worry about it. Like, you, it's what we do. Um, That's awesome. It is. But uh, I have lots of them. The, yeah. year we, the year we won it in 2005, I ate, I ate 26 number threes at McDonald's. What's a number three? It was a double cheeseburger, I think, or something. Double quarter pounder with cheeseburger. Yeah, yeah. It was because I did it the first game, and we were twenty-five and one that season. Yeah, see, I will not wear something 
if like we lose or anything right. like that. And I'll be like, ah, oh, what was I wearing? Okay, can't can't put that that polo on again or right. whatever. But if we win, I'm like, mm, okay, let's let's try this again. You know, let's let's roll this back one more time. And then if it works, then I'll keep it going. But yeah. like as far as like a, I'm into comfort too. I used to wear a suit you gotta, and tie all the time. What you know? it, so what happens if you if you lose? Do you have a, a slump buster that you come? Oh out no, with? then I just I cycle through until I find one that works. Okay. We've never we've been lucky. We haven't had too many losing streaks. Um. Describe your perfect player in five words or less. Five. Five words. All right. Um, long, athletic, teachable, hard worker, swag. Swag. I do like. I. 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 I, talk, I, I put dog. Okay, I like that. I dog. I you gotta do have like a little. Dog. You got a little dog. You gotta in have it. a little dog. The in good it, one's yeah. got dog in them. Yep. Uh, best basketball player you have seen in person? Oh, LeBron. Okay, best basketball player of all time? LeBron James. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna throw out John Havlicek. No one's thrown that out there. You go look at his stats and compare them directly with Michael Jordan's. Yeah. Now Michael Jordan is the best player of all time. But, I, we, but, we can have this debate. What What is What's the best player though? If That's you go the hard back time. to it's you, generational. That's what I tell the kids. It is. And I just I say, What about George Mikan? And they look at me like, Who's George Mikan? I it's go like, it's that drill you keep doing every day. <laughs> it is. I go, it's the first big guy and he played for the Minnesota Lakers. And they go, What do you mean? I go, Well, the Lakers used to be in Minnesota. Yeah. Like, so they look at me from like like I'm from Mars. Um, shot clock, yes or no in high school? I say no. Okay. Ooh, nice. I'm gonna give you a high five on that. Very few people do that. I uh <laughs> I'm still a, just a big believer in like having. First of all, you don't need it. You, you don't. don't need it. That's the problem. Is there how many games are four to two? Very few. Yeah, and, one out of ten thousand. And there, and the other thing too is like, what is the time still going to run regardless? Right. What is that going to do? Just have them turn the ball over more? And we speed kids up so much, the right. kids speed themselves, and it's like just relax yes, you know I like know. and so if you put a you put a timer out there i can only imagine how many more bad shots bad shot do. selection bad you know bad passes all that kind of stuff and so i actually we they're talking about putting it out here and you know there's like you said there's so many coaches that are that are proponents for it and i you know i don't know how many people are really just standing there holding the ball like that there's no one it's just anyway you know uh do you um jump ball yes or no like the the actual throwing the up. actual throwing up oh no possession arrow yes and i don't think you should start the game with a jump ball and here's the reason why okay. the officials are bad at making the toss they are horrible and there's only one of them unless it's overtime so why don't we just give the visiting team the ball every time and just do alternating possession the rest of the game that's not a bad idea i know I'm, that's going to be one of my goals in life is to get that change and the only only reason is the kids aren't good at it we don't practice it why do we need a jump ball we're not the nba we don't jump ball everything no and and you're There's not one a game and you're not going like you're not you, nobody's out there being the the huge high jumper like we're not this isn't a this isn't an event like I know. let's just get it going. first of all I, one of my guys got a foul like a year ago on a jump ball i go First of all, that's a horrible call. And second of all, you can't toss it. What are you talking about? Like, anyway, so that's yeah, good. The ball goes that one is my, way or the I, other. I am, my, I am on a mission to get rid of the jump ball in high school basketball. Alternating possession, visiting team always gets it. So what will happen? The coaches will spend time on a play to start the game. The defense yeah. will set spend time on how do we defend their play at the beginning of the game? Yeah, you're, rather gonna than, have, you're coming out with some sort of right, quick rather than the stupid jump ball, which the accountant who's working all day that's doing the high school game and just showed up 30 minutes ago can't throw the damn ball up. Anyway, don't get me started. <laughs> or it's um, too high, and then your kids. Can't best game you've seen in person? Basketball game you've seen in person? Ooh. Oh, Duke Gonzaga last year. Ooh, at T-Mobile Arena. That was a good one. Yeah, I do remember that one. That was that. That's probably the best one that I that I've seen that I can really nail down the one. We, I'm gonna say I I I coached a triple overtime state championship game that we won it, and the other team did a Chris Weber called a timeout and didn't have it in no. the second overtime. Hey. Yes, unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It was one of the. I mean, I should have quit in 2011, but anyway, it's, um, it's been a while. It's been, <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, halves or quarters? I like quarters. We play we play two 18 minute halves. So here's what it stop does. Stop clock, right? You guys stop yeah, the clock. Yeah, we stop the clock. Okay. 
It's a normal high school game, two 18-minute halves. And what it does is it does a couple things. It forces me to play more kids, which was high school athletics should be about. Forces me to, because no one can play 36 minutes hard. Like no one plays a collegiate game for 40 minutes. Nobody yeah. does that. So and and um, the only thing I miss about it is the timeout break between quarters. Like that's, yeah, that, that I can do you teach. get an extra timeout? No, that's what oh. I'm. I'm more. Yeah, that's the problem. I, we should have an extra timeout. Yeah, you should get at least one more. Yeah. Um, my thing. They see that kind of you say nobody goes back plays. That's one of my big things to to hang my hat on is you got to be able to play 40 minutes. And that's what I make I know, all my so kids. It's so hard. It's so hard. We we do it every practice. So we will go for a 40-minute session, no breaks, of conditioning, drills, and it's all fast-paced. I know. And and everybody's always like, why 40 minutes? And I was like, well, that's four quarters and an overtime. And an <laughs> you wow. should, If you can play hard. Hard. you got to be able Very to play hard. Very few kids can do that. And it's not – and nobody – and I'm never going to ask you to do that. No. You know what I mean? And that's kind of the, the, the thing that, like, kids don't really understand. It's like, am I really going to stick you out there and be like, go the whole time no obviously we're gonna sub we're gonna break but your stamina when you're in the fourth quarter and you can explode a little bit more for that rebound or you can chase down that loose ball or you can break down that that defender whatever it is because you have just that much more if it makes a difference in one game it's worth it's it. worth it uh best coach of all time Ooh, i know it's harder than player Oof. Who's the best player of all time? We'll go to that one first. You said that. Yeah, I said LeBron. LeBron. So, best coach of all time. Man, that is tough. I know. Coaches always have a hard time. It's either LeBron, Kobe. Well, Kobe or – I mean, Michael. that's the that's – the, the, It's just that's what everyone says. But they always struggle with this one. Are we talking NBA? Doesn't matter. Doesn't best matter. coach of all – I know. Pop might be up there. Pop is definitely up there. I Pop. I mean, I got three that I would put in that case. Okay, give me three then. Pop, Coach K, Jerry Tarkanian. No one's mentioned Tark, but I'll give That's you. That's what we're in Vegas for. <laughs> I mean, it, I, as like we, we talked about before, you know, being a, a native of of Las Vegas, the only thing that has ever been ingrained in me is the ninety ninety one Rebels is the best basketball team that they was were pretty good. That was ever good. there. I've always said there's two types of coaches: coaches with players and ex coaches. So, and he had really good players, trust me. And he, and he did it. I mean, the Juco transfer with. Yeah, uh, I know. With the whole, we could player. have a whole podcast about the portal and and I. I'll, we could uh, have a whole, that's a whole different. We can't go down that rabbit hole because we got about a minute left here. Um, all right. I'm going to end with this one bit of advice as a younger coach. So I consider myself a porch dog because I'm like probably several years away from retirement. Um, one bit of advice. One advice to a coach listening to this. Surround yourself with coaches that have been there. Ooh, why? Too many times, and, and I know that that uh, this is one thing that I really tried hard not to do. Too many times coaches, especially my age or whatever, surround themselves with people that are, you know, either the same as them exactly. Yes, yes men. Yes, yep. man. yes, man. Or yes, they're, 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 they're friends. And, you know, oh, I'm just trying to get my, my guy in here or whatever. And a lot of times those people don't really have a lot to offer. Um, and I would say the same thing for somebody that's, that's older too, you know, get, get somebody that hasn't been there, somebody that, that doesn't do it all the same, because there's, there's a reason why things work. There's a reason why they've worked forever. <laughs> there's a- and there's also a reason why things don't work. And so if you have that, that differs, differing opinion of, older coaches and newer coaches, you're going to get a more collaborative effort. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. So as we end on this, so you just basically led into teach hoops.com for the, if you're looking for a mentor, <laughs> but here's what I tell people. You want three types of coaches. You want a Yoda, someone that knows more than you can lead you. You want a, you want a, a worker B, which will basically um, do all the stuff that you don't want to do. <laughs> yep. And then you will have, a con, uh, somebody that will conflict with you, an adversary, someone that will question why you're running that offense, that defense. You want those three things on every coaching staff, and if you do, you'll be you'll be a winner. I, I cannot agree more with that. I mean, it's, and, and and again, if you're, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a shameless plug. If you're looking for a mentor, teachhoops.com is the place you want to go. Anyway, look it up. It's it's what you want. Josh, thank you for coming in. I appreciate this. this was. 
I can't believe we've been talking for like almost an hour. I know we could keep going. I, I know we could good. keep going. This has been great. When I my son turns twenty one, I'm gonna come out. We'll we'll do this again. My son's gonna turn to twenty one um, in a couple weeks, so we're gonna come out this summer. I've got some ideas for some podcasts this summer, but we'll 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 re hook up and and Absolutely. thank you for coming out. Thank you for having me. All right, appreciate it. Thank. All right, let's do. Uh, I gotta do. Uh, I gotta do a video. Hold on. That was great. Thank you. That was awesome.